All right, good morning. And uh, again, we want to welcome y'all to our service this morning. As always, we're happy to hear God is good. And he's not just good some of the time, and we just don't say that some of the time. It's something that we say all the time, that God is good. God is so good, and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Again, we want to thank you, Lord, this morning, and we pray that all is well with you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Let us go before God in prayer. Father, we just thank you this morning for your mercy and your grace. Oh, God, we thank you for your undying love, Father God. We thank you for the birth, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is our joy this morning, O oh, Heavenly Father, to know that you are God, and that you are God all by yourself, and that you have nothing short of your concern and your love for your people, Father God. So we thank you this morning. We ask, O oh, God, that the doors of church will open this morning, Father God, to receive your children, Father, that in, and that they may receive and drop the word this morning, so they will be saved, God, and have a soul. We thank you, Father God, this morning for your wisdom. God in the life of the Father God. Making reservation, making plan for them, Father God. Giving them, Father God, even as the word said, their daily bread. We thank you this morning, Father. We pray that you will allow us, Father God, to go forth in your word this morning, to speak your word to your children, Father God. Or not our voice and enlighten our eyes, Father God, that we may be able to see what you have planned for us this morning and also given to your people. So we just thank you and we praise you. In the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, truly, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Again, we thank you this morning uh, for allowing us to come into your household, come into your heart this morning to fellowship with you. This morning, we're going to be looking in the book of Colossians. Colossians. Colossians is behind Philippians. It's a New Testament book behind Philippians, which is behind Ephesians. Uh and so forth, which is the higher Galatians. So, the book of Colossians. And we'll be in the chapter 3 of the book of Colossians this morning. Chapter 3. Amen. Amen. And, again, we, you, you, hear, you often hear this being said, but we're going to try to be short this morning because our plan is to make this at least a two-part series, a two-part series. And we'll try to leave you on the verge of excitement that you'll be ready to see what the next section will bring. Amen. So, as we're in Colossians, the third chapter, and, and, and some of you may not really get this until we get into the latter parts of it because of the title itself. So the title this morning is, Do You Hear What I Hear? Do you hear what I hear? And no, we're not talking about no Christmas songs. Do you hear what I hear? Now, in the book of Colossians, uh, we're going to begin at verse 17. Verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, mm. do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. giving thanks to God mm -hmm. and the Father by him. Okay. Now, I want to give you a... a, 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 a Prelude to what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the Christian home. The Christian home. And the title again is, Do You Hear What I Hear? Because we're coming to realize that in the Christian homes, there's a whole lot of division. Division. Division in the Christian home. Uh, it has been said that, and I, and I actually read something a couple of days ago, was called, Who Want to Be a Married Christian? Who Want to Be a Married Christian? And the divorce rate in the Christian home is so great. So people are saying, why get married? Who want to be married? That's something that I read. Now, 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 so so we're going to deal with Christian homes. Do you hear what I hear? Is the Christian homes listening to the outside world or are they listening to the word of God, the spiritual world, to which they should be following? What's going on in the Christian mm -hmm. home? So, uh, again, let's, let's look at, let's look at uh, verse 17 one more time. And it says that, and whatsoever you do in words, not in word, meaning what you screw out your mouth, what you say from your mouth. Whatsoever you say, in the latter part, say indeed. Your deeds is your actual action. 
Your actual action, what you do. Your words is what you say, but your deeds is what you do. What's going on in the Christian home? Are we listening? Are we hearing? You read the latter part of that from again, verse 17. And whatsoever ye, de ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatsoever I do, in other words, whatsoever I do in my words, whatsoever words that come out my mouth, whatever word I'm speaking with my mouth, <laughs> understanding that the tongue is an unruly evil, out of the mouth come blessings and cursing at the same time. But whatsoever I do in word, mm. whatever word is coming up my mouth, whatsoever I do in deed, in other words, my work, I'm just not talking, but I'm doing it. I'm not saying what I'm going to do. I'm doing what I say that I'm going to do. I'm letting my yay be yay and my nay be nay. I'm letting my faith be commended by the works that I do. Because I know that I'm not saved just by faith only. There's a work that I have to do also. So whatsoever I do in words and in deeds, mm -hmm. I must do all in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Not in the name of Sonny. Not in the name of Pastor Lord. Not in the name of, of some political uh, 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 person. Not in the name of some job that I'm trying to seek. Not in the name of a, of a mother or a father, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever I do in words mm -hmm. and deeds, I must do in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything is done in the name of our Lord. Irresponsible, irreversible, illogically, Ill everything of what I think. Do you hear what I hear? I have ears to hear, but I hear not. Do you know that for the most part, a person who has lost their hearing has more greater instinct than a person that has their hearing? Awareness. We take it for granted, though, because we think because we can do this and we can do that. We all are there in a bag of chips, but it's not like that. See, because God takes the little thing or the less things in the world to confine the wise. He takes the baby to make us adults look real mm -hmm. funny. There's a word for it. It's called foolish. That's what God do. Do you hear what I hear? So, so, and he said, what the latter part said, do it in, the, in giving, what's that? Giving thanks to God mm -hmm. and the Father by him. And giving thanks to God and the Father by him. See, I'm hearing that it says that my words and my deed must be in the name of Jesus Christ and that I must be giving thanks, giving thanks, Thanks to God, the Father by him. Man, I thank you that my boss gave me a raise today. But I forget to thank the fact that the ball gave me a raise because of the work that God has blessed me to do. That God has blessed me to do. Because God could have did something to me where I couldn't work on this job. Amen. He could have did something to me where I couldn't just get it right. I could have came in that one day and just my mind was just so much into the world that I didn't do the job that I needed to do. And that boss is going to follow me. That, that, that employee is going to fire my behind up out of there. But because of things that I'm doing, I'm doing it in the name and in the love of God mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ, I succeed. Do you, do, you, do you hear what I'm hearing? I mean, God, love, God. <laughs> If I do this, then if I do everything in the in the, in the in word and deed in the name of Jesus, if I properly obey, this is what I'm saying. If I properly obey, everything will take its proper place, and everything could be a brand new complexion of who I am in my relationship with God. If I do it. Now this next verse. It's going to get you. This next verse is going to hit you hard. But are you here? What I'm here. Let's, let's go. Let's, 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 let's. Wives. Submit yourselves unto your husbands. As it is fit in the Lord. Back, back, I want to back up a minute before we get there. Listen. 
Now, what we do, we should do it unto God. And we should do it in the name of Jesus. See, young people, young, young people, they are, and some old people too, they're confused about what to do, what's right and what's wrong. They, they, they're so confused about what's right and what's wrong. Not just young people, but old people too, they're confused about doing it. And a new convert, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a new convert can really be confused because they have been doing things their way for so long. But now, here come this new love, this, this Christ love, this God love. And they have to re find themselves trying to readjust. They try, in other words, they try to, they try to burst something new in their senses, in their psychic world, and it's hard to do it. And this is why we should get new converts, hold up the new converts on us, and begin to groom them, begin to teach them, and show them the way. But somewhere along the line, we are not hearing what God is saying. But today I'm asking you to hear. Can you hear what? I'm saying today, so that we can get it. A, a, a young people, if you look and study the verses and put them into your memory, they can help you by this, in deciding and making and unlocking many of the problems that are in your life. I'm saying this into young people and old folks. If we take the word and we impart it into our memories, they can help us in deciding, in making proper decisions in our lives so that our Christian family could be bonded together as God would have it to be. Mm -hmm. God said in the beginning, in Genesis, the first chapter, latter verses of the chapter, he made sure he got to the end part before he made the statement. Y'all, I'm going to go to it because I want y'all to hear me. <clears throat> he said, let me go on over. Excuse me. Mm. He said, uh, I want to go to, to, to uh, hmm. Genesis chapter let me back this thing up. <laughs> go, I want you to go to Genesis chapter, chapter, chapter one, verse twenty-seven. Verse twenty-seven. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. So God created man mm -hmm. in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God created he him. Mm -hmm. Male and female mm -hmm. created he them. Mm -hmm. Keep on. And God blessed them, mm -hmm. and God said unto them, mm -hmm. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. and over the fowl of the air, mm -hmm. and over every living thing mm -hmm. that moveth upon the earth. And every little thing that moveth. Now see what this is. We're talking about in this, now we talk, we go, we go to see this, this in this household, or this, this this Christian marriage now. See, God created this man, and then he took from the man and created this woman. So in other words, God bounded them together. He bounded them together because they come, she come from him. So they're it's like one of the self same. Mm. One of the self same. You got a car manufacturer. And the car manufacturer has a name. Let's just say, let's just say GM, General Motors. General Motors 
so we'll say that Jeremiah is the head. Jeremiah is the brain. But you got Chevy, you got GMC, you got Hummels, all the other things that come from General Motors, the brain. Adam is that head. <clears throat> Eve is that part that comes from Adam that makes Adam look good. That makes it possible that you have a choice. See, now, in verse, in, 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 in uh, chapter 2, chapter 2, Verse 23. This is what I really want you to see. In chapter 2, verse 23 of that same book, Genesis. Do you hear what I hear? We're talking about the Christian home. Chapter 2 of Genesis, verse 23 and 24. And Adam said, Adam said, This is now bone of my bone. Bone of my bone. And flesh of my flesh. And flesh is my flesh. Listen, that is, she is man's counterpart. She is his counterpart. Not merely in feeling and in scent, but also in the flesh. But in, in solid equality. In solid equality. She's not only just the bones, 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 bones. She is his counterpart. Not just in feelings and in sense. The Christian home. Go on, finish reading. She shall be called. She shall be called. Woman. Mm -hmm. Because she was taken out of man. This is it. I want you to hear this. So listen. God did not take a woman from the feet of man. <laughs> The world is man talking about. God didn't take woman from the well, I'm gonna tell you that. God didn't take woman from the feet of man. That phrase, you cannot be taking your feet and walking on that woman. She's not under your feet. Do you hear what I hear? He didn't take it from <laughs> See, God never said. I'm going to take this woman from your feet. Therefore, she's going to be inferior to you. Inferior to you. Now, it seems like I'm talking about the man now. Mm -hmm. But God has a way of answering all our problems and all our questions. He did not make her to be inferior to, nor out of his head to be put on a pedestal. He didn't take the woman out of, God, out of Adam's head so she can be sitting up there on top of his head and he be her pedestal. <laughs> Say it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As his superior, God didn't do that. God didn't do that. And that ain't what God did. But this is what God did. But from his side... Close to his heart. <laughs> he didn't take her from his feet so he could step on her as he's inferior to her. He didn't take her from his head so she can be on top of him like she like like she's in superior to him. He took her from the side near <laughs> his heart so that she could be close to his heart. That's where God took that woman from. That right? Close to the heart. That's where God want that woman to be in this Christian marriage. He took her as close to the heart as he could be. So they could be as equally yoked together. As they possibly could. Let's go on to verse 24. Therefore mm. shall a man leave his father and his mother. Mm -hmm. And shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. We have some, some, some cultures that believe that the man is the head. And not the head. But 
the superior being over his wife. And that truly she should be under his feet. Truly she should be sitting in the back seat like he driving Miss Daisy. Being quiet, shutting up and don't say nothing. And don't give me no direction because you know they're good at that anyway. Mm -mm. But that's not how God did it. He said, therefore a man shall cleave, I mean leave his father and his mother. That don't mean that every time I go up, I got to make sure that even though I'm married, my father and my mother come first and whatever they say, that's what goes. They say put her out, I put her out. That ain't what God said. He said leave father and mother and cling to your wife. Man, my wife is a low-down scoundrel. You shouldn't have married him. <laughs> you shouldn't have married him. I know you had to see it coming. Y'all dated for 19, 25 years, so you, you started in high school. You saw from grade one all the way up to 12th grade, and you got a fool to marry. So you saw it coming, so who the fool? You the fool she ain't thrown. Clean to his wife. This verse here can be received as a declaration of true marriage. Cleave to his wife. Not clinging now. Not walking behind, holding on to short shirt tails and stuff. And they shall be as one flesh. And see, it's important to know this is what God did. He said to be as one flesh. This is again is why he receded as close to the heart he could get. So she could be as close to his heart. She's supposed to be his heart. It's hard. I know sometimes they say that men put their daughter first, women put their sons first, but that woman is still her heart. We don't always tell our wives and stuff how much we love them, but that don't mean that they're not near our heart. Because when we're away from them, our mind is on them and on what's going on there. Are they all right when we are not at the house? Is I got to worry about somebody coming in the house, breaking their doors. They, they may not understand it, but that's where we are. Mm. Because it's in us. They say that 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 uh that uh hmm. to cling to your wife is nothing to be ashamed of. Man, why every time I look at you, you got your wife with you? Why every you go, she's following behind you? Because she's near my heart. Like I said, we talk about cleaving to. We talk about. We, we ain't talk about just clean alone. It's just being, 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 just being. You know, just, just. Hmm, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying? Some of y'all use the word hand paint. Mm -hmm. But letting your wife being a part of who you are is not being hand paint. It's being. It's hearing. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing. Amen. God bless you. Mm -hmm. It's hearing what I'm hearing. And what I'm hearing and what I'm trying to hear and what I'm devoted to hearing is the word of God. Which is clinging in my ear, in my spirit. That, that's what I'm trying to hear. Do, so I want to know, do you hear what I hear? Now let's go on back over here to uh, Colossians. We're going back over to Colossians. Chapter 3. And like I said, if we impart the word of God into our memories, especially as young Christians, as, as young married couples, because we said that we got married in, 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 in the name of the Father, like we got baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. It's if we impart this word into our memory, then the chances of us Moving away from that becomes mm. slim. It can help us unlock so many of the problems that we'll face in our marriages, in our family, in our homes, in everything that we do. Mm. We, there was a time back in the 80s when he wore these bracelets called WWJD. What would Jesus do? Well, that mm. should be a question that we should be asking today. This is not an 80 thing. This is a life lesson. What would Jesus do? As Christians, we should mm. come to the action and say, well, what would Jesus do? This is a situation here, and I don't know how to handle it, so let me ask the question. What would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus asked the question, he said, do you hear what I'm hearing? Because Jesus said, I'm hearing what my father said to me. Now I want to know, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Mm. All righty. <laughs> We're going to move on a little further here. And, 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 and uh, listen. <laughs> we should challenge ourselves to ask, can I do this in the name of Jesus Christ? And we should ask ourselves, if I do this, would it be to his glory? And we should ask ourselves, can I expect his blessings from doing this? Those three questions that we should ask ourselves upon reacting to anything. Will, 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 will he give me his huh? blessings from doing what I do or saying what I say or moving in the direction which I'm moving? What, what, what that happen? See, that, those are the things that we should add or ask ourselves. Would we? Can we? Can I expect blessings from Jesus and what I'm doing and what I'm saying? Now I'm acting, now I'm living the words of my mind, what I'm doing. Can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, that, that, it is funny. It is funny. But these things, are you hearing? Do you hear what I hear? Let's let's go on. Now, 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 now we just got through covering what Jesus said. And how Jesus said, leave your father, your mother, and clinging to your wife. <laughs> I was listening to it. I watched this little movie clip a few days ago. And I, I, I was uh, telling my wife about it uh, last night. And in the movie clip, this lady walked in the house. She came in the door. And when she came in the door, it was a man <laughs> inside the house. And as soon as she walked in the door, the man jumped up and slapped her and asked her, where you coming from this time of the night, this time of the day? All that kind of stuff. Now look how you dressed. And the woman had on some blue jeans and a full top. A full top now. A full mm -hmm. top. No skin, no what y'all call that cleavage and all that stuff. It had long sleeves on. This is what she had on. The <laughs> jeans was, was, was loose. Like bell bottoms, mm -hmm. elephant legs, whatever you want to call them. They weren't all tight on her. Well, if she bit no, they'll split. This is how this lady was dressed. But he slapped her and asked her these questions. And as soon as he slapped her, another man in the house slapped him. And he asked her, asked the man, Are you crazy? Why are you slapping my wife? And he said, this is, this, because she coming in late, she just hit her chest. This is my wife. This is our wife. Mm -hmm. See, this is the problem. He felt he was the brother, and he felt because he was the brother, she was his sister-in-law, and living in his brother's house, that he had the right to slap her, talking about, we married her, because I was at the wedding when y'all got married. What kind of fragging nagging mess is that? God said that he clings to his wife and they become one. Not all them family members that think they can come in and take over and rule the wife and treat the wife any kind of way. So now I'm thinking, what if in the brother is what would the, what would the brother or the husband do to his brother for slapping his wife? What would Jesus do? Well the brother did what he should have done. He defended his wife. He chastised his brother. And he told his brother, if you don't apologize, I'll give you a chance to apologize. If you don't, you get up out of my house. And the brother said, I'm not apologizing. Why should I apologize to her? This is your house. This is my brother's house. We marry her. We ain't married her. Jesus said, she clings to her husband. Mm. They become one. He took the rib because it's at his heart. Okay, let's go. And the reason I'm saying it because I'm telling you now, the responsibility of the husband. Mm -hmm. We want to go to verse... 19. No, 18. <laughs> uh, uh oh, wait a minute. I 
got another one. Obedient to his word commands that notifies every aspect of our lives because of things that we think are right, but they are not. And if it don't line up with the word of God that we say that we, we believe in, then we shouldn't be doing it. If it does not line up with the word of God that we say that we believe in, then we should not be doing it. Period. Verse 18. Wives. In a Christian family. Come on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, Stop love right your there. wives. Stop right there. Wives, submit yourself <laughs> unto your own husband. Hmm. And see, in that case, what I just told you about, about the brother talking about this is our wife. In some cases, you got that. Huh? Mm -hmm. You got the wife that only married to the man, mm -hmm. but she's married to everybody else too. Everybody else too. Now, she's not only not submitting to the man, but she's submitting to everybody else too. And I'm not always talking about she having a these promiscuous relationship with men. I'm saying her submission to everyone else curtail her mm -hmm. listening to what everybody else got to say about her husband and about her household. See, that's part of it too. And that becomes the major part of it. How can you be a part of my heart, near to my heart, but everybody else got everything to say about me in your household? That what I say to you is meaningless. So wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Only as the husband, now listen to this here. Only as the husband is functioning properly in the word of God. Only if he's functioning in the, the sphere of God. In other words, he, he's just functioning everything about God. In his word of God. If, he, if he's doing this, then submit to that. You submit to your husband. And understand the word submit to now. See, that's some different words here. Submit to submit and obey is two different things. We submit because we want to. We submit because it's the right thing to do in this right situation. We obey because we are forced to do it. We obey because if we don't obey, there's some bad repercussions behind it. We obey because we don't have a choice but to obey. Because if we don't obey, we lose our precious uh, uh, rules and regulations, our precious jewels and stuff of that nature if we don't obey. But when we submit, God will lead us through this thing. Humbly submit yourself into the hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. In due time. So why submit? Listen. Wives, you must submit to your own husband. Only if he's operating in the right function that he should be operating in. Loving her with the same type of love which he has for Christ. Loving her with the same type of love he has for Christ. And I know it's not always easy to do that because some of these wives are something else. Some of them are something else. No question about it. But the husband has the responsibility to teach, to show, to be a leader in the eyes of his wife. And sometimes that means just sitting back and observing and looking and watching. And most of all, it means just praying and praying and praying and praying on. In the Christian homes, everything ain't roses. 
in the secular home, everything, it rolls is easy. But you cannot allow your Christian values to be dictated by the secular values of, a, of, of their home, of the world. A Christian woman should not be aligned, a secular woman, or a woman who's not in love with God and following the teacher of God, dictate what she does and how she feels in her home. Do you hear what I hear the Lord saying? Let me go over here for a moment. I, I need to give you some more stuff here. I need to give you a little something. something. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to mess around and get excited myself. And I might even mess around and get angry at myself. Realizing that I might not be doing all I should be doing. But this is why we get into the word of God. To make sure we are asking ourselves and doing what Jesus would do. It says, it says, it says, it says, listen. A woman has been given the place of submission to her husband. She is not to be dominated nor led by her husband. Submission is not to be abused by anybody. Husband, wife, children, nobody. In today's society, we have husbands. Husbands who... who Wish they could do right by their wives. Wives wishing that their husband, no, husband wishing that their wives would understand. Wives would wishing that their husband would get on up and get somewhere and get a better job. Sons wishing that mama would continue to support him and everything he do, even though he's still lazy and she got to tell him to continue to take a shower, brush his teeth and comb his hair. Daughter still manipulating the daddy in this society that we're in. In the Christian homes, too. So, the wife is not to be dominated, but nor to be led, but to follow his leadership. Follow his leadership. Not to be made to follow, mm. but willing to follow because of how he's been being led by Jesus. And now he's following the lead of Jesus. Whenever, wherever she can do so without compromising her loyalty to Christ. As your wife, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you to the end of the road as long as that road is being led by Jesus Christ. Mm. I'm going to follow you. Mm. Now, when you get off that road and get to lead, be, being led by some other faction or some other crazy stuff, now, 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 I got, now, now, now we got issues. Now I got a problem with that. And I'm being led and I'm following you not because of how I feel. See, because my feelings and my emotions, my thought process is not like God. Isaiah said my thoughts are not like God. Nor my ways like God. For his ways are higher than mine. His thoughts are higher than mine. As high as the earth is from the heaven. So it is. I paraphrase that. So don't tell me you have been misquoting scripture now. But if I follow, if I'm following God, I'm going to do what's right. Wives now. We talking about wives now. She's going to follow faithfully as long as he's following Christ. Where a Christian woman has a Back, has, has a backward husband, she should be trying to help him and point him in the right direction. Not trying to control him, not trying to dictate to him, but help him and point him in the right direction. You see, the thing about us, the thing about us humans, we are narrow-minded. I don't care if we got a, 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 a 180 uh, IQ or 160 IQ or whatever your IQ is. We are still yet narrow-minded because we only see things the way we want to see them, how I look in our eye, how we feel. Your feelings become your emotions act out. We allow our emotion to, to take control and then we go to we in our feelings and stuff and then we act out on it and nine times out of ten when we do that, we make the wrong decisions. 
we make the wrong decisions. So, if the husband is not doing what he should be doing, then she should be fulfilled enough to and endowed enough with the word of God to proper place in the proper place in a home to to show him and try to bring him back. You know, say if a, 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 a Paul says in, in, in the Corinthians, he says, says, if a man have a wife, well, we, so if we talk about a woman right now, if a woman has a, a husband and he wanted to be with her, then she shouldn't just throw him away. But she could pray for him. She could pray for that soul and she could continue to be a, a Christian example. And that Christian love, that Christian example, that Christian attitude, that Christian belief, that Christian behavior will draw him in. And I know it will because I know somebody did it for rude and wicked man. But his wife's constant love in God led him to God, to accept Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. So it can happen. So this is what, this is what a wife should be willing to do. Irreprudible of what's going on. Rather than for her to try to usurp her authority over him and be clever. I'm smarter than him anyway. And we have Christian wives like that. I know more about the Bible than he do. I know more word than he do. So what you know the word? If you ain't if, to make that statement shows that you're not submitting in the way God wants you to submit. That you're not trying to be the, 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 the real close to his heart and be close to his heart. You're trying to be the pedestal. Be up over his head. And that's not how to, how to line up. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? One more, one more verse for the day. Amen. Verse 19. Now we just got to talk a little bit about the wife. What is the wife hearing? What is she hearing? We still in, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 19. Husbands, love your wives mm. and be not bitter against them. Stop. Husbands, love your wives. Now when he says, husband, love your wives. He's not talking about husbands have a whole lot of wives. He's speaking in a general sense of all husbands, whoever is your wife, to love your wife. To love your wife, the one that was taken from you, the one that's close to your heart. Love your wife and be not bitter towards her. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to do. Because wives, wives can get on your nerves. They can push you. But the point is, and this is me, I would rather just be quiet and don't say nothing than to say something wrong. I'd rather sit still and don't do nothing instead of doing something wrong. Because once you say something, you put it out there in the atmosphere. Once you do something, you put it out there in the physical. You can't take that stuff back. Sorry, don't get it. The damage has been done. So I would rather just be quiet and don't say nothing. Stand still and let the Lord fight your battle. And ask the question, well, what would Jesus do? In this case, Jesus will just pray. Ask God to handle the situation. So, The idea is that a husband should love his wife with the same type of love, admiration, devotion, consideration that he has for Jesus. That's how a husband. The same love, same devotion, same adoration. You see, it's 
if there are simple or these simple precepts were to be carried out, then the world or then we wouldn't have as many broken homes and broken marriages if that we do. You got people these days, young and old again, what's the purpose of getting married? All they do is get a divorce. All they do is fuss and fight and argue. They got the same problems I got. What's the sense of getting married? Marriage is ordained by God. It's ordained by God. But if, however, if you are not marrying God, then why marry that man or that woman? Because if God is not in it, then the chances of it working are slim. Not saying it won't work, but the chances of are slim. It would be better if God was a part of it. And if you get up there and you get married and say that God, what God has put together, let no man put a son to, you say these things, but as soon as things go to going wrong or not the way I want it to go, me personally want it to go, then we got an issue. But that's not what God said here. He said, Hub, you love your wife as and not be bitter to her. <clears throat> there must not be any bitterness. There's a lot of time in the Bible, the Old Testament, especially the Old Testament, where you had the husband listen to their wives. The king listened to his queen. The king, the prophet, listened to the, the prophetess. Now, he ain't saying that you got you obeying them. They ain't, ain't saying you scooping down their law no you scoop. That's the issue that we continue to have. We wanna wives wanna overshadow their husbands. Or women wanna overshadow the man. That's not how it line up. And if I love God the way that I say I'm supposed to, women, I'm supposed to submit myself to my husband. I'm supposed to be there for my husband whenever he need me. And when he, when he don't need me, I know that if he do, I'll be there. And husband, you ought to adore your wives. You ought to appreciate your wives. Husbands want to do things for their wives, but they can't. And there's many reasons why they can't. Because some of our wives are just not, just not, just not, just not, just not. <laughs> if the word disappears from our psyche, from our mentality, then happiness in the home will disappear. <laughs> Somebody can say amen. <laughs> I said myself, amen. The happiness in the home would disappear. She should submit to her husband as a fitting act of God. He should treat his wife right as a fitting act of God. I'm going to read one more thing to you, then we're going to, we're going to, and that verse 19. When Paul talking here, he just didn't stop when he was talking to the wife. Again, as you see, he began to talk to the husband also. And he always said, do you hear what I hear? Because I'm hearing God talking. I'm hearing what God is saying to me. The question is, will you obey? Samuel, Samuel told Saul, what is this bleeding I hear in my ear? He said, oh, the people that were with me, they took this and they did that. But God told you to do such, 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 such. He told you to do such and such, such. So it's not what you're doing that matters. It's what you are doing in your care, in your love for God. It's not what you hear that matters. It is that if you are hearing the word of God, it's not what your deeds are that matter. It is are you doing the deeds of God that would make your life more profitable. That would make your Christian home more reasonable, more in line with the word of God. Are we in verse 8, 19, right? Mm -hmm. He said, Have a responsibility. They are to love their wives and not to be bitter toward them. These simple precepts were followed. Many of problems in the marriage of life would disappear in the home. 
Many of the problems in the married life would disappear in your home if you follow the precepts that God has set down. But we cannot follow the precepts, husband, because we're the turn to make our wives under our feet. We're the turn to make our wives our slaves. We're the turn to make our wives two, three, and four instead of number one. And that's why we're having problems. We're talking to the husband. Now, see, we don't talk to the wife a little bit. And we're hoping that the wife understood what we said. But now we're talking to the husband. Because most of the burden falls upon the head of the husband. Because we go back to Genesis chapter 2 again. 23 and 24. Back to him. Where he said that he took a rib from the man. It's like cooking. I'm going to make it plain to you. It's like cooking. You can take a rib and put it in your oven or on your drill, however you want to do it. You can take that rib and you can cook it. You can just put it on and cook it. It didn't amount to nothing. But if your desire to have the best cooked rib that you can have, it's going to be in your heart to season that rib, starting the night before, the day before, cemented it, spirit burps, with that thing, serenade it in sauce and stuff. Mm. In other words, you're showing love. You, you're showing the love that you have to make sure this rib going to be the best that it could be when it's time for you to gather it up and enjoy it. That's the same thing, man, you have to do with your wife. You have to seal your wife. You have to color your wife with love and respect and joy and satisfaction so that, so that, so that when y'all, and, and, and all this stuff start when you're going together. When you're courting. Because now you're grooming her to be the wife that God wants her to be for you. I hope this makes sense to somebody. Actually, no wife would be likely to object to submitting to a husband who truly loves her. She wouldn't have no objection to submitting. And I've seen wives and I know wives who submit to their husbands because they love them and they know their husband loves them also. I saw a situation, scenario. Man came home. His wife met him at the door. She's standing looking at him. She said, she said, come on, she said, come on in. I did this for you. And he just looking at her. He said, how did you do this? She had a good cooked meal. He said, how did you do it? She said, I sold my ring. I sold my ring. And I bought all this dinner. He said, you paid the rent? She said, yes, I paid the rent too. He said, why would you do that? She said, I look at you day by day. And I see how hard you work to provide for me. To make sure I got what I need. I see it, and I want you to know that I love you, and I will do everything I possibly can to make sure that you're okay, because I see your hard work. And he just stood there in amazement, in amazement. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because wives submit to your own husbands, and husbands treat your wife like God has shown you to treat her. And watch, in both cases, husband and wife, watch the results that will come to you. So husband, it has been noted that the husband is not told is not to make his wife obey him. Don't try to make your wife obey him. Y'all always say women got hard heads. They do got hard heads. <laughs> You can't make no woman obey you. That's not what God said. You can't make nobody. Get in there and cook me some neat. Get in this house. Do this with him. I said do it now. I should do it. Get it. Get it out. Get, do this with him. This is where you're supposed to be. Blah, blah, blah. That's not what God says. And for oh. God's sake, husband, when your wife has a name that is spelled M-A-R-Y, oh. That means it's not spelled B. Call your wife the name 
that is wonderful to be heard, that bring joy to her. That's the name you call her. And when you call her by that name, you will see great submission, great smile, great laughter, great joy. Would you do that? So husband. So mission should be voluntary. Not, not obeyed. Submission should be voluntary as an act that's fitted to God. God bless you tomorrow. We're gonna we're gonna start right here, right here. And what we're gonna do uh, uh, again? It's gonna be a part two. And and when we come back uh, on our next uh, service, we will give you a recap so you understand where we come from. But I believe that what you have heard today will give you something to think about all week long. Husbands, wives. Hearing what I'm hearing, mm -hmm. and hearing is what hearing is what hearing is what God wants us to do. He wants to hear what He has said unto us. In Revelation, the first chapter, and all that, all through that first, all through that chapter, all through Revelation, basically, God is asking the church, "Are you listening? Do you hear me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, you have ears to hear, but you hear not. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? God bless you this morning. God bless you, morning. Amen." We're going to get very close. God, we thank you this morning for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for this word this morning, Father. And we pray this morning, Father God, that these words that we have placed forth this morning to your people, Father God, will be words that will edify them to do what you have called them to do. That it will touch them, Father God, and bring that relief, bring that joy, bring that peace into that Christian home, Father God, that is needed, Father God. That people won't continue to look down at the church and look down on Christians, say they this and they and that. That they won't continue to do things, Father God. Because if the Christians are doing the same thing the world is doing, then why would the world want to become a Christian? If the Christians are doing the same thing that the world is doing, then why would the world want to trust Christ as Lord and Savior? So we're actually right now, Father, that these words that are going forward this morning, Father God, will penetrate into the hearts of your people, Father God. And that once the world see your people doing and believing how you want them to believe, acting in a way in which you call them at, then they will be drawn to that, Father God, and make a change in their lives. And we just thank you and we praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When things are going bad, what do we do? We put a praise on it. When things it. are going good, what do we do? We put a praise on it. 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 God bless you. We love you. Uh, we ask also that if you got any questions that you will submit them to us, Father God, any comments on the service that we bring that you'll submit them, and we'll be glad to comment back to you, get back with you on those things. We welcome your comments. We also ask that you will share, that you will like, and that you will subscribe to the Steer Field Anointed Ministry. God bless you, and we love you. Mm.